Fresquito in the raw. This is how you get everything comes out of the box. Everything is really nicely wrapped, well documented. You got a couple of business cards. Uh, this accordion wrapping is really cool. It's got all the pieces in these separate little compartments, everything you're going to need to, even a little security cable, Velcro for your battery, a lens for your GoPro, or actually a protective lens, and a screwdriver with the uh, hex head on it. So everything you need. All the parts, uh, I do caution you, some of these came out without the top plate, like this one. It's not in the bag, but uh, no worries, give them a telephone call, just a little production glitch, I think, and uh, they got it in the mail to me. Uh, some of the other parts, I think you guys already know how to put this stuff together. Got some excellent instructions online. By the way, it even comes with a kind of a rudimentary power distribution board thing there. Uh, so I'm not going to show you how to bolt this in together. Instead, the important part is how to put the electronics in and how to fit it all in there so it's protected. Um, so I'm going to be using, for this build, a Dragonfly 32. This is from Multirotor Mania. Uh, it is a Naze 32 clone. It is the uh, Pro version, or actually the full version. I got some uh, ESCs. These are Afro 30s because we're going to be running a new motor. This is a... One of the newer, it's a 2808, but it's a 2300 kV. And this is from Ready to Fly Quads. This is an experiment. If it doesn't work out, I'll put the standard Cobras back on there. But I'm pretty excited to get an extra 300 RPM for every volt. Uh, what else? We're going to have a, in addition to the multi rotor mania uh, brain or flight controller, we're going to have a multi rotor mania. This is a micro OSD. We're going to put that in there so we can see what's going on. A, uh, this is an LC filter. We're going to be putting this on our camera and uh, on our video transmitter. Our video transmitter, I'm going to be using immersion gear like I always do because it's plug and play. So I'm going to put this 5.8 on there to begin with and then later on I'll probably move to the 2.4 or cross your fingers, immersion comes out with a 1.3. Uh, they, they've been talking about it for three years and it's the release is imminent. But anyway, all the same plugs. If I don't want to use 5.8 after I get this thing PID tuned, pop this module off and plug on the 2.4 or maybe even the 1.3. Uh, in terms of receiver, this is a uh, Immersion RC uh, 8 channel. You can make do with the uh, 4 channel. I just happen to have this one in my parts box and so I don't want it to go to waste. We're going to use it. In terms of power distribution board, I really don't... That's kind of that's kind of minimalist. I'm going to go ahead and use this one. It's a little better laid out, at least for me. I try to use these lumineers. It's only four bucks and it's, uh, it's really well organized. Bolts in there, standard format. And on that, I'm going to be putting probably this Polulu because I may put a little surprise in there like we did before. Uh, the cyber scanner. Just a little cool thing to have. Anyway, these 2300s, I'm pretty excited about these. I am a little worried they are only 15 bucks each. $60 for a set of motors, so eh, quality may not be there, but if it is, this thing's going to be awesomely powerful. All right, let me go ahead and start bolting this thing together, and I will stop. I'll just follow the instructions, and I'll stop when it comes time to put some of the electronics in there. All right, guys, I tried it their way. It didn't seem to be working out too well. If we go to all the way to step five, uh, according to the assembly, then start trying to figure out your electronics, it's going to be a... Uh, Kind of a difficult way to go about it. So what I've decided to do, this is the top. Uh, go ahead and put the screws all the way through. And on the bottom, what I found pretty odd is they gave you regular nuts. Uh, they're probably going to vibrate loose. Get yourself some M3 lock nuts. Put them on there and those things are never going to come loose. So let's play it that way. The other thing I was kind of surprised about, um, on the top there's a whole row of holes. And I opted to go with a standard 30 millimeter uh, PCB, but for some reason these holes don't measure 30 millimeters. So what I had to do, just get your drill. I used a milling machine just to elongate the slots. It actually falls right between two of those holes, so just kind of connect those two holes and your screw will fit right through there and you can use a standard uh, standoff to mount that PCB. The last thing I'm a little bit, well, I'm not irritated, but it just didn't work out too well. This is how you were supposed to install the spacers uh, with the 10 degree forward tilt and it said with the same spacers you can have no tilt which is what I'm after. I've just had a lot of trouble tuning machines that have that forward tilt. You have to take, take them off from an angle. It's just a, a pain in the tuchus. So their solution to have flat arms is to mount your spacers kind of like that. You know what? 
that doesn't look very good, kind of ugly. So what I've decided to do is uh, redesign that whole thing and make it available to you for free on Thingiverse. So let me show you what I've come up with. All right, nothing to it. I've just gone into SolidWorks. You take, uh, just copied all their measurements and come up with a design that it's almost identical, except no angle. And then I'm just going to export this piece into MakerBot, and it'll look like this. We can get that to focus down there. And that will be our parts. I'm going to take them over here and print them in fluorescent green to match the props I'm going to be using. All right, I'm about ready to button up the bottom. It did turn out that going in from the bottom by removing the bottom plate, it gives you access to all the stuff that you need to install. So it looks a little bit complex. Let me move the camera just a little bit. I'll show you what it is that we have here. Let me zoom in. All right, we've got a standard PCB. Uh, I have, e uh, it's the same for all of them. I have my engine coming into the ESCs, and then the ESCs are feeding into the board. So we got one, two, three, four ESCs. We have the power cable going to the LiPo here with a, I got a XT60 plug on it. And then up on the front here, this is auxiliary uh, 2, and that will be 12 volts regulated by this little Pololo. And the reason I did that, again, I'm going to have to zoom out. I apologize for all of this. But when we power this baby up, that 12 volt auxiliary 2, let me close the blind here so you can get an idea of what this thing will look like. Kind of cool. We're powering this little Adafruit trinket, and this little trinket is nothing but an 8-bit computer that runs all these NeoPixel uh, LEDs. So I thought that was kind of cool. Let me unplug this so I don't fry myself the rest of this. And then the last thing on the front, again, we got an auxiliary. We have two, ca two cables coming off here. One of them is going to be for my OSD. I've got the wire running to the top side. Uh, and the other one is going to be powering a small... LC filter and power supply. This is going to be powering my video transmitter and my video camera. So hopefully this will filter out whatever noise is generated by all the electronics here. So the bottom is ready to be buttoned up. You'll notice I do have my little uh, lime green spacers all printed. These, these came out kind of nice. They're all lined up. No, no tilt whatsoever. So that ought to work out. Uh, I'll remove the tape and go ahead and button up the bottom. When I do that, we have all of our cables running to the top. So we have our power cables and then we have the four ESCs. I'm going to shorten these and we're going to figure out how to configure uh, that NAS32 board. So let's button up the bottom and get with it. Alright, let's talk about flight controllers for a minute. I don't know which one you're going to be using, but I've got a CC3D. This one is, I think, a, a Lumineer board. And this is a NAS32, or actually it's called a Dragonfly32 by MRM. They both have the same mounting profiles. They're both going to go here on these little standoffs, but we don't just jam them on there. Most of these little boards have a little arrow pointing towards the front of the aircraft. And if we put it on the way they recommend, we got a couple of things wrong. First of all, the header for our motors are hanging out to the side. We don't want all that stuff hanging out there. It's going to get ripped off. We want to rotate those to protect them. The other thing we want to do is get access to our port. And if it's oriented with the arrow pointing frontwards, it's going to be really hard to get at that port to, to adjust our PIDs and all that stuff to update our board. So let's rotate it. And if we rotated it like that, our headers are going to be up here and crash into a branch. It's going to damage all of our pins. So we're going to turn it like that, keep our motors pointed towards the rear. And that way our port is readily accessible from this side of the aircraft. I'm going to be using a CC, I'm sorry, uh, the MRM board. And it has the same problem. It's got that plug in the back. That, that would be the front. Uh, the thing is, it's a little bit different on this board. If I rotate it like this, like we did our CC3D board, it's actually going to put our headers for the motor on the front. So I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to rotate it like that. I'm going to orient my pin so that my ASCs can plug in from the rear. They're going to be well protected. And the only pin up in the front is going to be for my receiver. And I'll orient the pins pointing backwards so that nothing sticks past the edge of this board. So I think that's the ideal way to do that. And it leaves our port easily accessible from the other side of the aircraft. So let's go ahead and do that. We also don't want all this extra wire. It's weight, but it's also makes for a messy build. So when I get this installed, I'm going to go ahead and cut these and reinstall the plugs so we have a minimal amount of wire. We get that weight savings. So let's go ahead and do that and see what happens next. All right, might look a little bit crazy, but that's because I left all the wires loose so I can show you what it is we're dealing with. Let's start here in the front. This is the plug that will go into my camera. Uh, the power comes off. You saw this core, this power cord come off of my uh, uh, filter, which is located here. 
My filter is also providing power underneath the Naze32 back here to my video transmitter. So I got clean power for both video transmitter and camera. So that whole video system is going to be nice and clear of any interference, hopefully. Naze32 beard board here. Now the Naze32 looks a little complicated because I have it feeding into what really is a minimum SOD. This is called the micro OSD. Uh, feeding right into there, video comes in here, video goes out there directly into the video transmitter. Pretty easy setup. These two wires you see here are to monitor my LiPo voltage so I can see that information in my OSD. The other thing that's on the that's hooked into the NAS32 is I have a little GPS panel and it's plugged in right here. A little power and then transmit and receive. Pretty easy. Coming off of here, I have a plug uh, place for my motors, one through four, and then this is the PPM plug connected to my receiver, my Easy UHF, which is right on the bottom. I got the zip tied down. My video transmitters on top. Widely different frequencies. Should not have any problem with interference. And to make sure of that, because it's located next to these engine speed controllers, which generate a little bit of noise, I've kind of constructed the shielded cables. So I've got a shielded for the 433 megahertz and also a shielded for the 5.3 gigahertz video. Now, it's not going to be hanging there, obviously. That's just sticking up there. On, on the top cover uh, of the Tankito, there's a hole. So obviously, he'll be sticking right through that hole. Very neat build once we get all this thing put together. So let's go ahead and do that, see how it turns out. You guys might notice one last item is uh, normally the battery goes right here. And I decided to put all my electronics package in the center and then mount my uh, battery on the top. I just didn't like the thought of a heavy battery sitting right here so that when I crash, which is very often, I didn't want that heavy battery slamming forward and crushing my electronics. So I'm going to put the battery on the top. and. Because I'm going to be doing that, I've installed these 25 millimeter standoffs instead of the 35 millimeter standoffs. So that way it's going to make it just a little bit shorter in profile, give it a little, oops, a little bit sleeker, hopefully a little bit sleeker look. Let's put the top on, wrap everything up, tie, zip tie everything down, and let's see what we're working with here. All right, before we wrap this build up for good, we got to have the camera mount. And I got to say, this is a pretty slick little design. A uh, couple of couple of little problems I have with it. First of all, pink. You guys give us pink, really? You expect me to use these? No way. I substituted green. <laughs> anyway, a couple other things. Make sure you use the 22 millimeter here, otherwise your GoPro will not fit into that slot. You can't squeeze it in there. The other thing I noticed about this, if you line up, you'll notice there's a tie down slot here, and then the one in the back is right down there. So when your GoPro's in, you can't get at that. Completely, absolutely blocked all the way. Can't get at it. So how do you tie your GoPro down? Well, the way I do it, I just take a zip tie and you stick it through the back slot. You pull them almost all the way through and you fold them back out of your way and then you can slide your GoPro in. The problem with this method is that very often it will turn on the GoPro just like that because it's compression fit, it pushes your power. So just kind of be ready for that. Slide it in there and I'll turn it back off. With the GoPro 4, because they have a new weird menu, make sure you don't get stuck on pictures instead of video. Slide through the front, and then bam, you're, you're tied down. It's not, that thing's not going anywhere. All right, let me move that out of the way real quick, and let's talk about something else. They've given us this steel cable thing that weaves, very intricate weaving pattern to go in and out and in and out, and there's no doubt in my mind this will work. And I put it in there, but the problem is when you get done, you have a whole bunch of this cable sticking out the back, banging against the top of your camera. I made out of metal, electronic circuitry. I decided to use zip ties because I figure if I smash into something hard enough to break zip ties, it probably won't matter about the camera and the rest of the quad anyway. So zip ties for me, if you break two zips, you got a big problem. On the camera, um, you're it's a beautiful fit. Just use zip ties to hold it on there. You don't need to use screws or absorption mounters or anything like that. What you will have to do, I noticed, is no matter what camera you use, you're probably going to have to use a Dremel on the, the uh, quad body to make sure it's a nice, uh, nice fit. It will not fit without a little bit of massaging with a Dremel tool. Other than that, I'm very happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and put this on with green bobbins uh, and get the, uh, get the build completed.
Well guys, that pretty well wraps it up. I had a couple of uh, last minute tap sensing things I had to do. Uh, I was determined to keep this low profile, but what I discovered is that the camera mount actually depends on these 35 millimeter standoffs. So all I did is I cut my top plate and I just installed two layers. The higher stand here is for my GPS puck and it's going to have a little block. If I do crash my battery, we'll have something to slam into before it hits my GoPro camera. Kind of worked out better than I had planned. Um, I gotta say this has really been a fun build. Uh, if you download the instructions from their website and you follow them, unlike me, try to modify everything, but if you follow the instructions, everything lines up. It's beautiful carbon fiber work, all the holes line up, just very, very slick. It's really well thought out in terms of design. You got a lot of options. They put antenna holes literally everywhere. So anywhere you want to put your antennas, you're gonna have options to do that. The other thing I really like, let me get it turned over here, is this maintenance hatch. I crash a lot, I burn up motors, I burn up ESCs, I play with my equipment too hard. But that's the fun of it, isn't it? Now when I burn out an ESC, I don't have to tear down the whole quad. All I've got to do is remove this uh, access panel, remove the arm, unsolder it, pull it out, put the new one in there and solder it in place, and literally changing out an ESC or a motor is going to become about a 30 minute job. Not an all weekend affair, just really well thought out. There are some problems. Uh, I was missing some pieces. Uh, the top plate, I was missing the 22 millimeter standoffs. On top of that, I got a whole, you can hear them in the background, a whole box of leftover parts. I guess I need to keep in mind this is a brand new product, and this is one of the very few early ones off the production line. So there's going to be some learning curve on their part to get their shipping department lined up and to get their inventory straight. Right now, I've even got extra arms. I mean, I, I really appreciate it, but. I just think that sending extra stuff uh, by accident and miscounts is going to cost you guys some money. The other thing I have a little bit of a gripe about, pink, you know, really get some black ones. I mean, some guys might like pink, but uh, I'm just not one of them. The other thing is uh, it's a little confusing in terms of all these little screws. Uh, there's uh, several different sizes, um, and the instructions refer to another size, but just ignore that. If you guys will just use M3 by 8 millimeter. That's all the only size you need for the entire build. You don't have to mess around with different sizes. Just uh, and then the last thing is uh, for the kind of money that we pay for these, the standoffs. I, these are flat ones. We shouldn't have to print three D print our own flat standoffs. Um, you should go ahead and include those. The angled arms. I realize is a workaround, but it's rudimentary. It's kind of rustic looking, if you know what I mean. Uh, include some flat arms for these guys for this kind of money they're going to be putting into it. Anyway, I do really love the build. I can't wait. Uh, I'll give you some numbers. Uh, all up weight empty is 766 grams. With this 2500 Admiral, it's a 50C battery. Uh, it weighs 1044. If you're going to be flying one of these Nanotechs, which has a much higher C rate, this is a 65 to 130. This is 20 grams lighter. So you're looking at 1024 grams ready to fly, which is what I'm ready to do right now. Fellas, thanks for your time. Appreciate it.